it's for a race conditions, uh, but still. Um, so most people probably know me. Uh, used to be pumping it, and here is why the where the extra fun comes in. There we go. So, uh, does anyone use test TCP? It's very handy for testing TCP servers and clients. You give it two code references, it forks the server into its process, uh, finds an empty port, uh, and you can then list, run your application, listen for that point to that port, and then it forks the client, and you can then connect to the server and do whatever you want. Um, and it uses an NT port. Um, which claims to return a number of an empty port that you can use. Um, and it's, actually this test was happened yesterday uh, at, well, just before I was writing my slides uh, on our Build the World CPAD job, which runs on Jenkins node that runs lots of other things as well. Uh, this happens a lot of the time. Uh, usually happens in Danzo because that has a lot of tests that use this same pattern. Um, uh, problem is, this is what an empty port does. Picks a random port number, which is offset by the random number plus the pin and some random other stuff. Tries to bind to it, tries to get in until it succeeds, closes the socket, and then <laughs> it tries to port back. This is probably the only thing on the machine that's trying to do this. So, solution, fact that one and two in the new function that uh, actually returns the socket. Um, and test TCP. We have this same thing we had, and it's a very simple change to use this. Assuming your server can accept a socket rather than a port number, you tell the test TCP that you actually want to listen rather than just get a port number, and you pass your socket to your server application server. Um, of course, this is only works if your application can accept a socket. Uh, for example, if it's an external process, it gets a pin. But if you could. Uh, so some things, especially now with system B uh, socket activation, you can pass it uh, in an environment variable that tells it which file descriptor number is the listening socket. So you can do file null uh, on that and do that. There is there isn't a pro module yet to act like a system B socket activation. There's a pro module to for demons to handle being activated by system D. Uh, if I suddenly feel a um, uh, surface of two its, I might write the other side of that. Uh, just because it might be useful for testing things, because uh, those jellyfish might not like all of us having fun with an ice cost stuff. I think that he was testing where he was, had exactly this problem because it could only take. It was actually not just that like, it could only take a port number. It couldn't take it take that. You had to put the port number in a script that you fed to the running daemon. Uh, but as I now that more and more things are getting system D support, that's actually more reliable way of doing it for external processes. Um, so if PAC um, used to not take a socket, it used to take just a host and port. Um, so I fixed that. That's fairly simple. It already when you create a PAC loader, it creates a socket with community that key name in the hash. So I just made it take that as a parameter and only actually listen itself if it's not there. Um, PAC test server, which is one of the back ends of PAC test, um, can do this. By default, PAC test uses, um, just mocks HTTP, doesn't actually use TCP at all, it just holds your application code ref. It has a PAC test server, which actually is based on the server and was suffering from this. Um, um, but yeah, I should have some more slides in between here. Um, but yeah, that's all on CPAN now. Test TCP. It fits actually in two but that broke because garbage collection timing issues with how uh, the value persists on them. Because a temporary value created by an extent expression by statement in Perl is collected at the start of next statement. If the statement that created this, this temporary variable, in this case the socket, is the last statement in the sum, that does not get collected until the statement after the 
caller runs. Uh, so that broke. Uh, it didn't break TSTP itself, it broke some other module, which I can't remember off the top of my head, um, that then couldn't find because it passed, it called that empty port and passed that directly to, to listen to, to either socket new without storing in a variable in between, without having a statement boundary in between, so that socket never got. Uh, it got closed to state. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not in PLAC yet, uh, because <coughs> there are some other potentially breaking changes in PLAC that need soak testing a bit longer. But the original impetus of this was fixing Dancer, because that was the one that actually kept failing in our tests. But um, someone else rewrote the, how the dance tests work to make this harder to while, <laughs> I, was, while I was fixing test TCP uh, and we actually stopped using Dancer. Uh, there's one app still that uses Dancer, but on the Dancer itself instead of having it in our build the world module. Uh, and Dancer 2 fixes this by using uh, uh, test, so which it doesn't listen at all, but if you tell it to, now it uses doesn't, it breaks for sleep. So, yeah, if you're annoyed with your dancer tests failing with that error message, switch to dancer 2 and it won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> or using this, use this pattern to fix the dancer more tests. I wasn't meant to, but then I couldn't report because I didn't need to. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's it really. Any questions or comments, heckles? No? You disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're going to have um, a break after the lunch.